with this show, which is more so like a a recap slash preview slash talk shit show, like whatever yeah. the fucking thing is. Like we were off last week, but there wasn't really much to talk about last week. We had the what was Curtis the Blades card last week. Yeah. Okay. The, I, well, yeah. I want. We to can talk. talk about we the, can start off with that. But yeah, we we definitely just totally fucked up on the RDA call. Like Oof. I was so sure he was going to win that fight. Jeez. And to that me, one though, was bad. I don't know. How did you feel about it? People are, I was more disappointed in RDA than impressed with Chiesa. Yes. Cause that's what it felt like because we knew Chiesa is a good grappler. He didn't really show much in the striking. I mean, in this, the second round, I thought he lost because like even in the the brief times when they were separated, he was he was kind of getting chewed up a bit, eating a few leg kicks. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say I did not expect him to hold RDA down. I thought if he got him down, he would get him uh, get up pr- like not maybe not that easily, but he could work his way up. Kiesa was able to just fucking totally hold him down. I, I, and oh, dude, how big he was. Holy fuck. See, He's the, th- huge. the thing about ba- like he was tall, yeah, he was. He was tall. bigger than RDA though. Like, he was definitely bigger than RDA, but significantly like, bigger. Like we've always known like a, he was tall. We've always known he was but tall. But he looked like an actual welterweight, not a lightweight who went up to welterweight mm-hmm. and like a tweener. He didn't look like a tweener. He looked like a full blown welterweight. Mm-hmm. So RDA that, is on like the just a maybe too big for lightweight, but maybe too small for welterweight. Yeah, he's definitely he's the one sixty five. He hundred percent needs a one sixty five yeah. division. He's just. He, he's got the, uh, I guess, the weight now, but he's just too, he's built too small for mm-hmm. these lightweights. Uh, sorry, Wild these welterweights. Weights, but yeah, I, 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 I get where you're coming from in terms of being more, imp- or more disappointed in RDA yeah. than you were impressed with Kiesa. I got to give some credit to Kiesa, though. No, I didn't yeah. think that he would have been able to yeah. actually do that. So yeah, I can't say that I was more disappointed by RDA. I was kind of quite impressed by Michael I was Chiesa. definitely impressed by Kiesa, but I did feel like, like, what did RDA expect? Yes. You, you know what I mean? Like, but, you, you face guys like this before. They always hold you against the cage. You defend well, but then you get controlled and, and time runs. You lose decisions like this. I, what, like, yeah. it didn't seem like there was much urgency. There was That's a couple of times where feel like lacked. he kept getting pinned against the cage. Like, where's the movement? I, it just it didn't feel like he had anything new to combat it. So, like, what are you just going in and hoping that he can't do what the others can? Like, you yeah. got to expect it. And kind of, you know, he, it's, he keeps losing the same way. He took his gloves off after the fight, and we kind of thought that it was yeah, a no, wrap for him, right? But he but didn't he, put him down or anything. He didn't put him down no, or anything so. like that. Where does he go? Does he go back to that's, 155? That's like, the thing, though. He's, uh, I think he's, he's going to keep getting like, out, out grappled by these guys and, you know. By, by the bigger wrestlers. Uh, and he's just going to be gatekeeper, I think, because he's now eight or nine. He's one and four, one and five. No, no, no. Sorry. One and three or one and four now? One and four, oh, I think. Covington. Yeah, one and four. Coming to Usman, then he won against Lee, then he lost again to uh, Edwards. Edwards. So one in four in his last five. Yeah, Edwards is the only guy he lost to who didn't do that grappling. Thing. He did grapple him though. Yeah, he in did, but, not round, his, but he, he stood with him quite often. He did too. stand with yeah, him too, and he won the stand up. I think that that's what like threw RDA off in that fight too. Is he was expecting a striking first. Uh, mm-hmm. Leon Edwards and Leon Edwards comes out there and within like the Start first thirty seconds up. takes him down. Starts like him that up. fucking. Uh, surprised everybody. I'll, I'll I'll give him some slack on the Lee and Edwards one. The Michael Chiesa one is tough for me to swallow for him. Uh, to say that, that okay, this guy ba- is still a high level welterweight. It, it sets him back a lot. Like this puts Kia. Did they update the rankings? They yeah, must he's have six. He's, he's six, six now. He's six now. Okay, so RDA was five, um, and now Chiesa, Chiesa jumps in into five in to, to number six. So he's probably going to hover around that six to ten range if he's not able to like shore up these. These wrestling weak- weaknesses. We've seen him like deal with it in the the Kevin Lee fight. My question is like, he thing. finished that fight in round four. No, no. So but, if this was a five round fight, how differently would it have gone in rounds four and five against Kiesa? Kiesa seemed. I'm not trying to take any slack away from Kiesa. I think that he probably would have held up in the fourth and fifth round too because he didn't seem like he was gassing mm-hmm. out. And that's kind of Kevin Lee's game. Like he goes hard. Well, it was weird how hard he went for those first two rounds. If you remember, no, the RDA th- fight. That was the thing with the RDA was still succumbing to that style but it looked like he was okay succumbing to that style because i'm just gonna stay sit here and defend let this guy blow his wad yeah but the other guys they can they can keep that, they pace, kept that pace that was the problem like even the lee fight if lee could actually go at that re- re- he just that rate ridiculous race way or too pace. high a pace and you you kind of felt like 
Like right away, everyone's like, "What are you doing? You're gonna gas." And then he gas. Commentators so was, are like calling it out too. They're yeah, like, there's no way he's strange. gonna sustain this. I'm thinking like, okay, you must have trained like a monster if you really think that you can do this for five rounds. Nope, like it was just he gas. So I, once again, it felt like if Lee had the gas, then you probably could have done the same thing to him. So he's, I don't know. Let's let's spin it on to Michael Chiesa though. Yeah. That's good good call one. out. Yeah. Don't I, know if Kobe will take it though. Great night for him in general because that was that was the right way to do everything. Like yeah. he had a quick interview, just went right to the call out. It it was a call out that made sense. It's up in the rankings. Kobe's coming off a loss. Mm-hmm. It's a good matchup, I think, for Kobe in a lot of ways too. Like if I'm Kobe, I'm like I'll take it. I could beat this guy. Yeah. I can K- definitely whoa, beat this Kiesa's guy. is number seven. Oh, he's seven. Okay. Yeah, because Thompson and Maya moved up. Can you believe mm. Maya's five fighting Gilbert Burns? Yeah, that's weird. Dude, look at Usman. I wouldn't have even minded Thompson and Kiesa, to be honest, but I, I like the Colby fight. I don't know if they'll do it, though. Usman has beaten everyone in the top five except for Masvidal. Yeah. What a fucking monster. Which like, it looks like is going to be next. Yeah, Dana's that's, calling That's for the it. rumor, right? Uh, International Fight Week. I'm He's, completely okay with that. I'm totally okay with that, too, because to me, now we can kind of get rid of the whole Connor talk with Usman or Masvidal. Yeah. And... If Connor is not going to get the title shot, it's just Gaethje left, which is kind of what everyone wants at Lightweight. There is still one more name out there. Am I missing somebody? Nate Diaz. Oh, Unfortunately. Right. I'm thinking about that a, shit. But it is a reality. Fucking like they Nate can Diaz sell that third well. fight. They can sell it. Is it the right one? Probably not, especially considering that Nate Diaz just lost to Ori Masvidal. I would rather see the Gaethje fight, but I could see them making the Nate Diaz fight too. And you know what's funny too? Um... It's probably smarter for Connor if he if he if he's if he's dead set on that trilogy has to happen. It's probably smarter to do it now. He's do got it now. all the momentum in the world. Nate's coming off that loss. I absolutely agree. He could, he could probably get that win pretty easily. And then he's on a two fight winning streak. Over both two guys in a row that are coming out <laughs> losses, though. Like, come on, man. And then he's probably going to vault himself into a title shot later yeah. this year if he gets the victory I'm, there, too. I'm Those hoping, are winnable fights for him. Like, it's 100%. it's crazy how, like, like even his run to the title shot against Aldo, how kind of handpicked it was for him to get there. You know, everybody can say what they want about the Chad Bendis fight, and yeah, that should have been his toughest fight. He took the fight on fucking four days notice, five days notice, whatever he it was. Gassed. He gassed out so quickly, too. Oh, he beat a wrestler. Shut up. There's an asterisk beside that. He right? was taken down repeatedly. Yeah, and then it just the gas tank took over. Yeah, right. Yeah. So again, being Dennis Se- Dennis Seaver was his last fight before a title shot. <laughs> Are you shitting Dennis me? Seaver, Are you yeah. kidding me? And that now that just reminds me of Joey Diaz. Remember when Joey Diaz was going off on a rant about how like uh, Eddie Alvarez on is going to way work? up when they're when uh, like Connor's opponents, like he's just talking shit about them to a certain degree. And he's yeah. like, and then, then look what they do. They put him in with Dennis Seaver. Oh, Dennis Seaver. Oh, <laughs> such a hard fight. Yeah. The way he was fucking doing it. I love so me some funny. Troy Diaz, dude. So funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, they'll probably even do that fight at 172. They clearly don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah, the Nate, yeah. the Nate fight will be at 170. Nate's not going to fucking cut to lightweight if he doesn't have to. Same with Connor. Connor's and if like, they what? if they try to push that whole narrative of like, okay, this fight's now at 155, it's because Connor wants to fight for the 155 title. Shut up! In January, no, you're talking about 170. It doesn't matter why are you going to make these guys cut if they he's don't care about fight. that. It doesn't matter. No, no, they wouldn't even care about that because Connor is technically the number one contender after a welterweight win. He's, he's going to get the lightweight. So they don't care what weight, weight he makes. Kavanaugh brought up a good point, and I kind of like it. He's like, what? Like we, we know he can go to lightweight, but it's like, why should we cut the weight unless we need to? I, I'm i not like I'm not It's the, it's the it. Connor exception. It's exactly. the, simply the Connor exactly. exception. No other fighter can pull that shit be, off. I think every fucking fight, there should, the two fighters should get together, have a gentleman's agreement. Let's just not cut weight. Mm-hmm. You remember when KJ Noons fought Sam Stout? They were both lightweights, but they far like and it just was randomly a welterweight fight, oh. and both guys just like we just don't want to cut. I'm like, surprised you remember that too. I don't Holy know why I remember fuck. that too. I think that's why it stuck in my head because of the fact that I'm like, dude, this is interesting. This is just two yeah. lightweights not cutting weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we just do that? If we if we know we're both the same size, mm-hmm. what the fuck are we both killing ourselves for? Yeah. So I'm I'm cool with that. Um, as long like in Kavanaugh's point is like, well, when the title's on the line, we'll make the weight. No problem. Mm-hmm. So it's it's funny. Connor's number three. Justin Gaethje's number four. Dustin yeah. Poirier's number two, thank God. Like, that's at least a little bit of justification in terms of why Connor shouldn't be number two. But you could realistically even put Connor at number Here's two. Thing, it should it should be Khabib, Ferguson, Gaethje, Connor, or Poirier, and then Connor or Poirier. Here's the thing, man. 
I knew that would happen too because Connor was four and Gaethje was three. And then as soon as Connor beats Cowboy, I'm like, watch, he's going to go up, up above Gaethje, which is like, why though? Why? It you're, makes you're zero just, sense. You're, yeah. Both of them have their last win as the same guy, but I'd say Gaethje's on the more impressive streak. Well, I mean, Connor was just picking at the bones of J- Gaethje's kill, really. Exactly. Like, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that's the, a perfect ca- way to put it. Cowboy was already compromised. He just got knocked out not mm-hmm. too long ago. Mm-hmm. He comes in there and then. I want to quickly put a away. bow on uh, on the Raleigh card. Is there anything else that kind of stood out to you? Uh, oh, Angela Hill. Nah, fuck that bitch. Man, I thought that was more <laughs> impressive than we thought. I think that fight was like a minus 570 to go to a decision or something ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a crazy and she, thing. I was like, okay. Like, I thought it was just going to be a boring decision once again where she maybe outpoints her. But she took her down, looked pretty good. On, I mean, not the greatest competition, but mm-hmm. still showed a different... Cyphers is decent. Yeah, showed yeah. a different wrinkle in her game. Looked yeah. good on the ground, at least in mount. Finished her well. So I thought that was a good performance. Like, I'm like, I'm always trying to be a fan of her. Yeah, I get what you mean. But her voice is so annoying, dude. Like, it is pretty funny though, because like she's, she seems like so like really cool on Twitter, but when she talks, she's like a little more shy and reserved, and it's like a totally different personality. She no, she she's a rocker, like oh, she's okay. a legit rocker. Okay, okay, like she, she yeah, I, I don't know what else. To say. Her record's eleven and seven now, which is weird. Yeah, it's uh, she's former Invicta she champ. Doing better. One of the things in her bio says that she's the first ever American, African American UFC fighter. Something to gloat about, apparently. Was she? <laughs> According to her Twitter. <laughs> no, she wasn't. Who else? African American, as in a black fighter. Uh, female African American. Oh, okay, Sorry, okay. My you bad. didn't say female. I'm like, my bad. Wait, my bad. what? I probably hey, forgot okay. a word there. Jeez, my no, bad. Right, but yeah, first female okay, African American fighter. Fine, fair enough. Yeah. Cool. I mean, what what, how many are there actually? Well, the funny there was 135 first. Yeah. There were no black fighters in 135, yeah, right? And now when they introduced 115, she was a part of that show. Yeah, okay. And then who else is there? Uh, there's Dan- Danielle Taylor. I was but she's to not say with the, 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 the little one. Jack yeah, Chick, but she's not in the UFC she, anymore. She should be at like 105. I mean, yeah, exactly. Her and there's even Cyphers. Cyphers should technically be 105 as well. She's tiny. Yeah, they're tiny. It's some. Well. I could see it actually being a division they eventually add to the UFC strictly because there is a ton of talent coming out there as well. I know there's a bunch of girls in Toronto as well that are in the 105 range and they fight for Invicta too. And Invicta has a decent Adam Wade, Adam Wade division. So if they could sell it, why the fuck not get rid of 145, add 105, right? 145 is strictly going to be Bellator now. Like another fight happened that, that weekend was Cyborg and Julia Budd. Yeah. I'm not sure if you watched that fight. I saw highlights and uh, I thought it was a good performance from Cyborg. It wasn't amazing, yeah. but it was solid. Like, it, it was her sustained aggression throughout the fight that eventually yeah. broke Julia Budd. Yeah. But and she it, has like good cardio. She finished yeah. her nicely in the fourth. The, the combo where she was going like to the leg, the body up up top. Like it was, it was good. She was picking her shots. Can, can we be honest about Julia Budd though? She would yeah, not no. cut it in the UFC in terms of physically. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, you! Oh, I see what you're saying. Are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> Did you hear the Lovato you, Jr. You kidding me? Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck, dude. Like a great cheese on that. Holy, that, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, insane. That's her husband behind her right there. Yeah, she's definitely on some shit. Um, uh, did you see the Lovato Jr.? I haven't seen so it yet. I'm still so behind on so the Jerry's. So it's just him talking about uh, how he's got. He has some sort of brain thing, thing. right? It just spots, uh, like, little, uh, I guess, black spots when you look at a MRI or ultrasound, whatever it is, um, on his brain. But he's not having any symptoms of it, but he can't not... I think there's, like, a doctor issue where you might not be able to get cleared. Um, They could go in and remove it, but they're like, why remove it if you're not showing symptoms because it's an invasive brain surgery? But whatever, he's just talking about all that. But Rogan talks about how did you feel when Musasi's claims came out and stuff like that, and... To me, it felt like he never really like seemed angry about the night. He's like, I don't know why he would say that. And this is that. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like Everybody at that knows. time, I was like, yo, bro, you juicing. You I, know I respect too. you, but yeah. you juicing. <laughs> You're 36 years old. Yeah. You got the gyno going on and you got the super rip cuts. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. You're, you look like his body looked like Jinder Mahal. And Jinder <laughs> Mahal is what? Yeah. He's clean? Next Come on, level. dude. Yeah. Yeah. It was like it, that abnormal look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just see it. Yeah. So, 
I don't know. That, Good for that, him. That like he got to the pinnacle of where he probably would be, considering yeah. how old he, still he is. Worked hard as fuck, obviously, yeah. but he's definitely on shit. Yeah, um, not going to get away with it. Did feel bad for him in that podcast, man. Like, uh, just, he's still kind of unsure of what to do going forward and stuff, and to have shit on your brain, man. That's mm-hmm. fucking scary. So. I think I read something where it said like it passed a couple other tests in the past, but then there's one where he had to do it for a, I think the Musashi no. fight. He, and that's where it came up. He said this is like the first time I think he got his brain tested. And before, that's what I mean. Like he was able to pass a pass. Yeah, because uh, medical test because they didn't test it. Yeah. But the Gegar Musashi one they tested yeah. it for, and that's when they found and something. That's when they found something. Yeah. That's so, kind of scary as fuck. Yeah, I think he's disqualified probably from fighting in because I think they were trying to do a rematch in in I think England. It was my, probably I think it was London. Mm-hmm. But uh, he got he's disqualified from fighting there because of this thing. And then I think California. He's probably he going to have to drop the title. Let's be real. He's he's thinking like I'm on it. He's on an indefinite suspension. Like he's just trying to figure out what to do. But he does want to fight at least maybe once more. There was somebody that said they should fight for a vacant title now. Yeah, there. He Who was saying it? he was saying it's probably going to be John Salter versus Gegard Mousasi. Really, for the vacant Salter? Title. Yeah, Salter's on his little submission streak. Uh, Salter's last loss is, is Musasi and somebody else, right? Salter's last loss is to Lovato Jr. by submission. Oh, yeah. Um, and Salter's been <clears throat> summing everyone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- sorry, the, I, again, I did want to wrap up the Raleigh card. Oh, yeah. In terms okay. of if let's there's talk anything about else. The junior fight. Uh, hold on. Let's just start at the bottom real quick. Uh, Burns Landwehr, that was a decent fight. That's uh, Gilbert Burns' brother, by the way. Oh. Yeah. He had like a quick, like, it was a pretty crazy fight between him and Nate. Brett Johns looked good. Sarah McMahon went out there and absolutely grappled, fucked the shit out of Lena Lansberg. She finally didn't get caught. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Well, that's one thing that we kind of should have known going into this fight. Lena Lansberg's not the best off her back. I thought this fight was going to take more so in the clinch position where Lena was going to be able to dust her up a little bit before Sarah McMahon was able to get the takedown. There was no clinching. It was straight to the ground. Well, that's what I mean. Like there's no transition period. I'm like, what did you fucking train for defense on this? Like it's not even like Sarah McMahon had to change so many attempts together. It was like first, first first shot, maybe block second gun. Like what the fuck? Did not what are you training? Uh, Montel Jackson versus F- Felipe Caleras. Holy shit. That guy took uh, beatings. Oh, yeah. The guy, like, would not go out. Montel Jackson had him, like, on the ropes oh, so many yes. times. Could not put him away. Yeah. That was that an was, insane that fight. Was a little, uh, Justin Keys got screwed. What? She won. Oh, no, wait. Was this? Oh, no. I'm thinking about the... So who was... The, what the fuck? Mazo? Mazo fight? Oh, that was from the week before. Oh. Uh, that was 246. Who, who did she <laughs> Mazo and Aldridge. Aldrich, I'm getting And we did this uh, deciding splits on Justin it. Justin Keish and JJ Aldrich. <laughs> oh my God, we did. That's hilarious. Okay, uh, yeah. Never Pudilova, mind. I don't know. I didn't watch this fight then. Pudi Lova did not show up at all though. Like, I'm not sure okay, how much yeah. she watched that matter. fight, but she it. just let that fight go. Like, anytime that she actually established her distance and threw her one-two, she landed on Kish and it like, it it showed that it would been it would have been dominant if she stuck with him more, but she just fucking kept moving around, letting Justin yeah, Kish just hit shit. her fucking like yeah. it was so so it was so bad. Putilova is probably going to get cut now. Uh, Arnold Allen gets a decision yeah. over yeah. Nick Lenz. Nick Lenz just hanging around still. Uh, Bevin Lewis against Daquan Townsend. Townsend's the guy that like tested positive yeah, for fentanyl cool. and all that shit. I don't yeah I don't get it. Uh, Jamal Hill versus Darko Stosic. I'm still not sold on Jamal Hill. Um, there's a lot of hype around him just because he's huge. I think he has like a 79 inch reach. Holy fuck. Uh, massive guy, um, but very green. Like, still holds his chin up in the air like way too much. So, a lot of guys are going to be able to catch him. Sto- Stosic is just one of those smaller, like, yeah, like, like, like tight Jam- striking. Jamal Hill's landing combos, but he's also landing combos on a, on a stationary target. Exactly. Which is blocking. Exactly. Then we went over Angela Hill a bit. Alex yeah. Perez, great win for him there against Espinosa, who was in his home city pretty much mm-hmm. so that was unfortunate there we went over Kiesa RDA now let's get to the main event Curtis Blades versus JDS yeah, sad as fuck did you see JDS his last thing that he just put out yeah his That's managers think he should concerning. take a rest highly he's concerning. like no I think I should get right back someone's into it. gotta stop this guy he's gonna turn into a fucking Bigfoot case he's clearly not like he's like a little innocent little child mm-hmm. so you, he has to almost be protected from himself <laughs> yeah. like no, your your own coaches are saying you need to fucking take time off, and you're like, no. And then you see his comments about the fight. I was just too worried about the takedown, so I was just throwing from too far away, and I was missing, and I just didn't. I I did what I shouldn't have done, this and that. So he's annoyed. He said about the it. same thing in the Francis and Ganu fight, where he goes, "I played into his game, or whatever the fuck it was." 
You kidding me, dude? So why the fuck would we send you out there to fight again? You got to f- stop doing it. You got to fix this. or you're, you're getting put out a lot. Not to mention, how many fucking times are you going to throw the same goddamn uppercut yeah. with your chin up in the air? Yeah. You're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. Blades is just like, all right, cool. Like, straight right, overhand right. Knocked him the fuck out. That was insane. And the thing with Junior, this is the saddest part, too. He gets clipped, and he looks, this the the fucking, the face, the face, the way he looks, he looks like a child who you feel sorry for, who you just want to jump in and save him and help him. Because, and he turtles up. He gives up. Yeah. He totally quits. As soon as he gets hit hard. He mentally folds and becomes a scared child mm-hmm. and just blocks until it's over. He did it against Stipe. He did it here too. Mm-hmm. I, I just I don't like the look. He needs to stop fighting. The, the only argument that I could see in his on his side is he has three, three and two in his last five. He did have a three fight winning streak going into the Francis Ngannou fight. Francis Ngannou is a motherfucker. Curtis Blades is a motherfucker, but he's still able to beat guys like Tai Tuivasa, Blagoy Ivanov, Derek Lewis, who are the guys that are trying to, they, they tried using JDS as like gatekeeper status and they weren't able to get but past the gate. Those guys are good for his style too. They're more stationary, plotting forward. JDS can hit his movement and get around them. Derek Lewis too, like he's high level, he's good, but he he pulls his out a lot of fucking wins out of his ass. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, his back thing. And he still doesn't really like evolve. No. He's kind of the same. Yeah. So I didn't think... And his style was terrible for Junior. Mm-hmm. So I didn't think it was the super The fight would have been interesting though. I, I wish we could have saw that one. Because I feel like that would have been a perfect gauge. Because I think Alexander Volkov is not like gatekeeper status. But he could potentially be in the top five. And this would have been a perfect just for JDS yeah. in terms of style and everything. You're not getting a guy that's a, a wrestle fucker. You're not so getting you're not a guy that's think about the wrestling yeah. exactly or a heavy puncher like an Ngannou or even Blades. Right? I don't know if you saw this on Blades' record, but apparently he has a, a grappling competition coming up against Anthony Johnson. Oh, that's pretty funny. The fuck? <laughs> well, it's just grappling, so he doesn't have to. Still worry about though, the power. that's so weird to see that. Yeah, he should win that. And Poirier Tonin is on that too. That's uh, later this month, actually. That is two or three fun. weeks from now. Where's Rumble at? Is Rumble going to fight July, hopefully? I think he's slowly trying to get back into it. Lovato Jr. is going to be on it, too. And Keenan Cornelius is a motherfucker Oh, is well. the same card with Lovato? Yeah, he, Lovato was talking about how he's doing uh, the rematch with Cyborg Abreu. This is the guy that Shab grappled yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Hit him with that Shab shutdown. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? Do they have a year? No, they don't have on He doesn't know how to defend against a shop <laughs> shutdown, bro. <laughs> shit. Couldn't do shit. shit. <laughs> Couldn't do shit. <laughs> um, so Blades, uh, obviously his most desired outcome is Jarzinho Rosenstreich he's, finishes and got him. Like he, he, would, he will probably corner Rosenstreich if bruh, he could. <laughs> leading up to the fight, he's going to be praying every day. Yeah. He's going to be doing all this uh, voodoo shit to yeah. make sure that it works out. He's probably going to be offering help to Rosa to try to win that the fight. only thing here Whatever is you need. there's no real clarity in terms of exactly what's going to happen next in the heavyweight division we think it's going to be Stipe versus DC but Stipe is sitting out now right I, there's I, eye issues or something no Stipe is cleared he's cleared but he's still like he's saying okay the doctor I'm, he yeah. said the doctor's cleared me but the, the team's like no fuck that I don't care if the doctor's cleared us we're going to take our time yeah 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 um and and he's throwing out that he wants to fight someone new I think he's just uh dicking around with DC because of what the DC did with thing. the whole Lesnar oh, thing. Yeah. So he's kind of giving it back to him. But I think eventually he's going to have to get take the DC fight. And I think DC made the comment that if Stipe doesn't rematch me, they're stripping him. Which oh. which I think is the right call. Because you know what? <clears throat> you fucking sat out and did jack shit while DC defended the belt. Then, he, then you did get the rematch after sitting out and not doing anything. If I'm not mistaken, though, I think Stipe was considering taking that fight Instead of Derek Lewis. Which fight? When 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 oh. DC first beat Stipe. Yeah, yeah. Right? He had a pretty quick turnaround and he fought uh, Derek Lewis at M- Yeah, MSG. that was to save the card because there was a yeah, follow-up. I no, thought no, Stipe no. was supposed to jump in too, no, but no, then no. Uh, DC I'm... took Derek Lewis instead. No. Not 100% no, no, sure no, about that. No, that was I don't never know where up, I find up. that. No. But, yeah. but just the fact that for you got knocked out, you sat out the whole time, waited, waited, waited. Then the UFC actually gave you what you wanted. And now they're like, okay, look, we gave you your rematch. Time for the trilogy. Both of you knocked each other out. Time for the trilogy. That's what we're saying. And we did you a favor. You can't really hold out on that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm okay with him being with him being stripped at that point. Mm-hmm. 
And we know DC really only has like one fight left. It would be a miracle yeah. if we get him versus Jones again. No, it would kind happen. of be a miracle. It's not happening. So Ever. he l- literally just wants to steep it one back. That's it. He just wants to pretty much, you know, right that wrong. Because mm-hmm. he, I mean, watching those two fights, you really felt DC is the better fighter here. Mm-hmm. So it, it, I agree. And I think it's kind of like, well, it sucks now that I have a knockout loss to this guy because I fucked up. And yeah, that, now that go two right that period. wrong, dude. Yeah. <laughs> He had like a two two to three minute stretch where he just fought like really dumb. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess even leading up to that, um, he he he, wasn't he was using playing his with fire the whole time. Yeah, because he just felt confident. I think but first round he took him down. Yeah, and controlled him there, and then yeah, second, well. third, and fourth he, he just played try. on the feet. Didn't even try it. So yeah, hope I I really do th- hope that rematch happens at least because they forced Stipe into it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if Stipe is going to really actually hold out to the point where he gets he has to vacate the belt, but he might even do that too. But I think Blades is going to have to stick around and wait. Like if wait if they end up booking that fight, Stipe and DC three, and say Francis Ngannou goes out there and beats Rosen, Francis is one hundred percent next. You can't Francis you can't is leave next. Him. But then what does Blades do? That's the problem. Blades is going to have to stay active. Blades is just going to have to fucking keep fighting everyone below him because like. Maybe He's just Volkov in the is still situation. there. Harris is going to be out for still a little He's while in this the morning. He's in a situation because in any other division, he's getting a title shot right away almost. Mm, but it's mm-hmm. just the fact that he can't leapfrog the guy above him who he's lost to twice. twice. And then the other two above him have their own little thing going on. Yeah, there's JDS, Rosenstrike. I doubt he would take Rosenstrike off a loss. He, he would take would. him off a win. I think he would. He took JDS off a loss. True. And he's There's on still a Volkov streak. out there too. He fought, he fought below in the rankings and took mm-hmm. a guy coming off a loss. I think the only guy would be Oh, Cyril Gann is slowly coming up. I still think he's a couple fights away. I, mean, I think he might take Lewis because I think Blades would look at that as like, I could easily fucking wrestle fuck this guy. It depends on if Lewis beats Latifi here. Yeah. Okay. Should beat depends. him. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Want to talk about LOTN? <laughs> no, I'm not, on, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not willing to Lewis put that money on Lewis. Latifi, if no. it was anyone, Latifi? Latifi is slightly quicker, and Lewis is just a power puncher. He's tiny I'm not, as I'm not investing but, money but on Latifi that. But Latifi is not exactly Mr. Movement who can get out of the way of shots. True, but he packs a lot of punches, or oh, packs a lot of power too. Foxville in that fight, dude. He's I, going down. I, at minus 260, minus 280, and that Derek Lewis is. he's lost to Vulcan Ozdemir where he got mauled too. Mm. Oh, I think he's so fucked. Lewis is just a little bit too sloppy for me now. Like, I, I don't know if Fair I could enough, like, but if I could That is a trust terrible matchup for Latifi. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, hopefully he could get that Lewis fight. That would be good for Blades. I don't know if Lewis would even take it, to be honest. Like, Curtis Blades would have a would just have fun field with day. Lewis. Like, like, it'll look worse than the Mark Hunt fight. It's just like, okay, I'm the Mark gotta, Hunt fight. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, it's like, oh, I just got to avoid one punch. Yeah. And then as soon as I get in tight, this guy's not getting me off. Him. No way. He can keep giving up, getting up as much as he wants. But I have cardio. I have the wrestling. Keep taking him down. Look what DC did to him. He's so tiny. Uh, greatest heavyweight wrestler, Curtis Blades. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it's hard to say. Well, I guess the whole thing with DC is he just doesn't use it that much because he's so good at the striking. Like he uses the threat of it. Greatest MMA heavyweight wrestler of all time. MMA wrestler. Actually oh, uses his wrestling. I, I have to go. I Kane's got to be better, man. Right? I kind of threw Kane's name out there as well, too. But people are like... Do you know why? It's just the, his lack of resume. Like, he has the... You all said the MMA wrestler. It. Yeah. You said MMA wrestler. If, if you're talking about just r- straight wrestling, maybe Blades. But He has Kane, the most takedowns. Kane would control with the wrestling while damaging you mm-hmm. blades does a lot of dragging you down yes when like like on the justin willis fight he just kind of kept dragging him down once he does get positioned he will fuck your world Over up him. for sure Shamil yeah Abdur- him off that one yeah was nasty. but he's more of a pure wrestler i find whereas velasquez is constantly grinding you with wrestling but at the same time constantly peppering you and damaging you so for mma wrestling i would still go with kane man statistically you got to give it to Blades just due to the fact that I think he now after this fight, he had, actually did he even land a takedown in JDS. JDS no. did a good job of that, staying away. That's what. See, that, that's why I that was, was a, a little look. bit shy on Blades. That was a bad look for Blades because like he would just kind of like dive in and not even get close. JDS would just circle around and run yeah. away. But that could also just be like JDS was only thinking about takedowns. Mm-hmm. And that's, and we, that's, a, that's a, that in turn opened up the striking to be exactly. so easy. So. It, it goes hand in hand there. Yeah. Uh, but I think he has over 47 completed takedowns in his UFC career. Oh, wow. That's pretty impressive. But 17 of those were against Mark Hunt and somebody else. I forgot who Justin the hell Willis? Probably Justin just, Willis. Justin Willis done a lot. In two of those fights, he had 17 takedowns. 
Yeah. And Which just kind of goes hand in hand again. Like, if you had to take him down 17 times, that means they got up 16. Yeah, but his... Or 18, depending see, on I don't mind that too much because a lot of these wrestlers, um, they don't mind it. Like, they, they almost want you to get back up because I'm just going to drag you back down it's and tiring. you're, you're going to gas even faster. Like, I felt like... Kane would kind of let you to the certain degree, like, yeah, cool, get back. I'm just going to keep peppering you and I'll dump you back down. And mm-hmm. then you, if you can't get them off you, it doesn't matter if you, if they, if they get back up. Yeah. And Blades is good at kind of like, you know, maintaining that body lock, making sure he just stays glued to you. I want to see who Gon has up next. I feel like they booked a fight yeah, for him. Yeah, they did. It was a decent name too. Nothing, nothing Olofsky? amazing. Shamil yeah, Abdurrahimov. Right. That's a good fight. That's a solid fight. That's a good fight from this like is a good like raise like slowly rising. Him I up. like what they're doing with Gon. That's number he's, ten. Shamil number a fucking ten. Baby in the heavyweight. I think him and Blaze are the same age, like 28, 29 uh, at could heavyweight, be. which is retarded at heavyweight. So yeah, take your time with him. Twenty nine. Yeah, I think Blaze is twenty eight. You're take right. your fucking time with him. Let's let's uh, let's get more on the highlight reel. Yeah, I'd say he needs at least a, maybe the Shamil win, and then maybe like a Volkov or something. And then we could launch yeah. him into a number one contender, contender fight. So maybe by the end of Fuck 2020, it, this guy's like heavyweight contender. Go even, man. Just maybe, Why not? Maybe get him a, a Overeem or something. Fucking Overeem, dude. Who shouldn't be fighting. Yeah, it should anymore. be done for him. He's going to keep fighting, though. Let's be real. You never talk about CTE? <laughs> that guy, who's been put out more than that guy? And as yeah. violently yeah. as that guy. Like, every time he goes out or just gets stopped, it's fucking brutal, dude. Do they have the salaries out for that DC card? Oh, because I want to say over he made. He's always at 800,000. 800, 865,000. Well, 850 yeah, to the show. Fuck, dude. Yeah, that's 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 always his. Uh, he's always around the eight, nine hundred thousand. You tell me you wouldn't continue to go in there and get fucking KO'd for 800,000. Well, I, mean, I, I guess at this point, I've already been knocked out 15 times. What's 16 going to do? With that said, though, he's made so much fucking money that he probably should have been investing this shit anyway. So he doesn't have to fight right From now. The first time he, I remember when he came into the UFC in 2011, he was always making 800k a fight. Something ridiculous. And how many like times that. has he fought? And before that, he was making good money. Yeah. Career earnings. Do they have? Oh, it's just so 141. He made 264 to show 121 to win, which is a weird number. Oh yeah. Okay, His loss to Silva was 280. Loss to Brown was 280. Oh yeah, at that time they were paying less. I remember that. But then his pay just kept going up. He took a little bit less for the uh, oh, yeah. 160, his fight with Mir. Well, yeah. yeah even with Jocker, even what was that Jocker he fought, 100,000? Uh, damn. When did he really start making it? The Dos Santos fight, 200. Look at Arlovsky, though. Oh, damn, yeah, 750. And then the Miocic fight, 800. Yeah, now he's making 750, 800 in almost every fight. Look at that shit, dude. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine straight fights where you're making over $750,000. 9.8 million career earning, at least yeah. according to soft Now, let's numbers. say he pocketed like around half of it. So let's, yeah. let's go even less than that. Even if he pocketed like four to but, five but, million. But, but, but on top of that, sponsorships. Yeah. All so that other shit. That's at least four to five million in your pocket. You should... Should be good. Be able to put go. that somewhere. But he's just a competitor. I don't think he's. Does he really need to be much. around this much though? <laughs> yeah. Um, we let's let's go for maybe another 15, 20 minutes, but let's finish off at two forty seven, which is this weekend coming up. Oh yeah, dude. We're back to eight straight weeks. Fuck yes! I eight hate these breaks. Straight weeks. I hate these breaks. All these people. Oh, it's nice to have a week off from MMA. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Even when there's MMA every week, there's six days off in between events. That's enough. <laughs> like, why do you need another fucking That's week? So what true. are you talking about? I want to see if they actually have events booked Plus, after if you want to do shit, just watch the event the day after. What's the big deal? Uh, yeah, that's true. So it ends April... March 28th? Yeah, March 28th is the last event in a row. And One, two, nice three, four, again. five, six, seven... Eight straight events ending and with then, Ngannou and Rosen strike. Then we're back at it. Then we get three in a row with Ferguson and Khabib. Oh my! God. Ferguson and Khabib sandwiched in the middle of that. But there is, uh, they might squeeze one in between April twenty fifth and May 9th. I, yeah, that'd be nice, dude. Two and a half months till you think the fight stays together. I don't even want to talk about it. Oh man! Shut I'm up! So Shut your face! Let's do two forty seven. I don't even want to jinx that yet. And the problem is, you can't even be like confident until they step in the cage. Yeah. 
fucking the last, I think, was it Khabib on weigh-in day couldn't make it, pulled out. And then Tony was like three days before. The most fucked up part about that one, it was on April Fool's uh, when he pulled out. And, so, it, and it was the fourth time it was being canceled, so no one believed that shit. And Ariel tweeted it. And then I think one of his last tweets, was, the tweet, the follow-up tweet was, this is not an April Fool's joke, this is for real. <laughs> That's like it felt like it felt like the MMA gods were just yeah. fucking with us at that point. Like we're gonna make him make sure this he gets fucked up on to. Uh, April. This 1st. is the last chance because Tony's right at the tail end of like yeah. getting too old now. He's I think he's turning thirty six. If, this if year. he's the one that has to get pulled, if he's the one that gets pulled out, yeah, you're right. I think it's way more detrimental than if Khabib gets pulled out because they can still reschedule the fight for later the, in this year yeah. as long as Ferguson's health is intact. Yeah, how many more fucking torn ACLs or torn oh. right to your cuff, whatever the fuck it is, can Tony Ferguson go through before he can, you know, not be able to compete at the highest level anymore? Um, Two forty seven though. Let's go from the bottom and then we'll work our, all it. the way up to John Jones. Uh, I don't know Dominic Jonathan Reyes. Martinez. I know that's he, a decent he will, fight. He will because he's one of the guys who beat Hen and Brow. One yep. of the eight guys at the end who beat Hen and Brow. <laughs> eight guys. Yeah. Uh, Polarte Newsom is a decent fight. Miles Johns against Bautista, decent fight. Andre Lee should have a easy day here against Lauren Murphy. Uh, Alex Morono was supposed to fight. Forgot who he was supposed to fight, but that guy pulled out, and now we get a, a, a newcomer. Yep. Trevin Giles against Antonio Arroyo. Arroyo is a fun guy to watch. Giles not so much. Uh, weak card. Yeah, well, I'd actually I was, say two forty. Just about to say this is the first time I'm seeing anything outside of the main card. What the fuck is that? And they that had to not- add that Austin Lingo versus Yusuf Zalal fight just to round out the card. They only had ten fights before they found a replacement for Morono, and then they found these guys. Okay, the I was wondering. Scene. I'm like, well. That schedule is also going to change. They they have to have four fights on the ESPN. Yeah, portion. I think the Lingo and Zalal fight so might, gonna might find itself. They said that the main card is going to stay where it is, um, but the, the prelims will get shuffled around a bit. Okay, yeah, that not prelim much. is garbage. The only fight that I'm re- kind of interested in is Lee and Murphy, just because I like Lee. And actually, Martinez and Yuo should be a fun fight. But uh, the other ones, I give more fucks about the prelims on 246 than I do about 247. Right, 246, all the prelims had something interesting about them. We're cooking until 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I love that fucking, that, that setup there. Um, so uh, let's just start off with the fucking, the first yes. main card okay, fight. Okay, here's Derek the thing, Wilson though. Okay, here's the Yep. F- I, four of those fights on the main card are great, though. The the heavyweight one with Juan Adams. Eh. Remember 246? It's the Same Olenek thing, yeah. and Green you, fight. You got to hit him with like two good ones. Then you got to have a nice little sloppy, possible quick fun, finish. Fun heavyweight type of fight, but that doesn't mean much. And yeah. so you can go take a bathroom break until it's <laughs> or burn. Time, time for the co-main event. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. Lewis, Lewis and Latifi. Latifi. I, I, we kind of just gl- glossed Yeah, we over did it. go over that. I think this is a squash match for yeah. Derek Lewis. I don't think it's as easy as people are making it seem, okay. but... Uh, I, I see why people like yeah, initially think that Lewis should go out there and knock him out ASAP. He should kill him. Um, this Bectic, is a fun fight. Bectic, Dan Ige versus Mercer. Yeah. Dude, Ige, I've kind of had my eye on him. He's kind of just under the radar murking dudes, dude. His, well, his odds are slowly starting to show now that people are respecting him. And he him. runs through guys. Like, he yeah. comes at them and his fucking ground. He's just so um, uh, aggressive, pretty yeah. much. It's, it's, he's fun Four to watch. straight wins. He lost his debut against Julio Arce, which is not a bad loss. And then Mike Santiago, Jordan Griffin, Danny Henry, he's, yeah, he's and Kevin looking, Aguilar, who was a great one in his last fight, too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that he's... I think he was an underdog in that fight, too. And I remember thinking... In the Aguilar like, fight, yeah. I, I, I like so. the Zige guy. And mm-hmm. then, boom, he won that. So that's definitely a fun fight. Beck is kind of on the way down or maybe has fizzled out. His stars fizzled out a bit. After I'd that say Emmett the loss. hype has fizzled out. Yeah. Um, I think that he could still have success, though. Yeah, it was just... Okay, the, too much the, hype right The Elkins him. fight was like, ah, that was kind of fluky. He can rebound, but the Emmett fight was more like, oh no, that mm-hmm. that one hurts. That one hurts. People are putting a lot of stock into the fact that he got dropped by a jab in that fight. If you remember that, uh, that I think shit. it was just timing, like in that terms of back to going into it, and then it was just a really stiff jab that dropped him, and then Emmett followed up and got how the TKO. How there. many times has Barboza been hit by hard shots and not gone out? Mm-hmm. Cowboy dropped him with a jab. Yeah, because Barboza literally blinked. Yeah. At the split second where the jab came in, so he didn't see it. Mm-hmm. 
I think skill for skill, Bektik is definitely better than Ige here. I think it's going to come down to mental. And that's such an amateur thing to say, but I truly believe that that's what it is here. With Bektik, he needs to be able to rebound from this from this loss to Emmett. A lot of people, you know, going into that fight, he was a minus 185 against Emmett, minus 175 against Ricardo Lamas. I believe he won that fight, right? Yeah, he beat Lamas. He beat Lamas. It wasn't the most impressive thing, though. But, but look at his odds from, like, even... Lucas Martin, Paul Redmond, ever since he's been in the UFC, he's been no worse than minus 250. Minus 270 to start. Minus 240. A lot of hype. Uh, th- I, yeah. I, I think this is this is the time for Ige to shine. And, and You think so? Yeah. Like he, Wow, Ige even opened as the favorite. Yeah, there you go. Wow, but now he's plus They're down on him, I guess. Damn. I think it's going to be a good fight. I probably would have bet Mirsad Bektik at minus 105. Oh, really? If you give me that. Interesting. If, if you give me underdog odds on just, Bektik here. Eh, just the way Ige looks, I, I that that's a fight I'm a little worried about. Like, mm-hmm. I would probably not bet this fight. Mm-hmm. because I think I am I'm, probably going to pass it overall. I'm big on Ige, but mm-hmm. like you said, Bektik still has that skill set. You can shut a guy odds down. Odds are getting better on Ige, though. So man. that's something to keep an eye on. Right? He's good, man. Um Tafa and Adams, really nothing to talk Who about cares, there. So. I think the odds are just a little bit too far off on that too. Minus 235 for a guy that's not as technically sound as Adams yeah. and who can get clipped just as Justin Tafa can be. Do you remember Tafa? He's the one that got put out by DeCastro. Uh, it's, I yeah. know the name. Yeah. I don't remember the fight though. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's being then, fed to Adams here. Uh, Kind of. Well, I, kind I of. guess Adams like is he's not, been seen as like Mark Hunt's protege. Either, yeah, yeah, exactly. Adams is not the best either. He's just giant. Yeah, he is big, massive. Big as fuck. Uh, Shevchenko against Chukagian. Jesus Christ! Look at those minus odds. one thousand, minus eleven twenty five on five dimes, minus fourteen hundred on bookmaker against Chukagian. Here, is there even a slight part of you that thinks that Chukagian can dance around and? No. Land shots. No. Not at all. I mean, she's going to land something, but... But not enough even, to sway judges. Is she going to hurt her? No. No. Is she going to land more than she gets hit? No. Even in the grappling, she's probably going to lose that too. Chef Tangles. I don't think it's going to get into the grappling realm at all. I think it's I think it's going to be True Kagan just trying to like dance around and and try to land the shots and get in and but out. But every time she engages, she's probably going to be the one that she's gets probably, the, Yeah, she's going to get Chef hit. Chef is so good at just waiting for you. When you come in, she'll like she she'll hit you two up. or three times. Yeah. And then you'll hit her like once or twice. Like, oh, what the fuck? It just catches you as you're coming in. So. I don't think Shevchenko puts her out. I think no. this is going to be a decision just due to the fact that Chukagian moves around so much. Jessica, I was more so tailor made for a, a knockout. Yeah. Same with uh, Liz Carm- Liz Carmus more so a decision. She's a little bit more durable and doesn't really but fight as dumb as Jessica. Carmus just fucking she went into that fight to not lose badly. Yeah. yeah. She didn't go in there to win. She mm-hmm. just didn't want to get finished. It seemed. Yeah. She didn't do shit. There's not much left for fucking Shevchenko, which is unfortunate. And this is something we started the year off with was yeah. the deciding splits that we Just did between her and the Nunes. Do the Nunes fight. For Why not? Sakes. Right? Please to God, do the Nunes fight. Uh, let's see. Joanne Carlo. Actually, you know what? We've gone over this. We don't need to fucking do it again. Yeah. But there is really nothing else left for her. Uh, main event. Main event. John Jones. Dominic Reyes. Hey, man. My thoughts quickly. Too early for Dominic Reyes. I get. I told you numerous times before. Thing, he though. should have been fighting Jan Blahovic and give Corey Anderson the shot. I agree. It's too early for him, but this is a fight I would just stay away from in terms of betting too, because we don't know how good Dominic Reyes is. For all we fucking know, he comes in and actually knocks him out in the boxing. You know, he's big. He's a big boy. He's athletic. He's young. He's getting better and better in between fights. He did have that good hard fight against Vulcan. That should have taught him something. I would just kind of stay away from betting on it. I mean, I I think everyone does expect Jones to win. I I'm not going to be shocked though if Dominic Reyes actually manages to surprise people and like, oh my god, you heard him, and then actually put him out. I a part of me like going into this fight, I wanted to make Andrea Lee my lock of the night play, but her odds are just way too juicy, and I was considering parlaying John Jones with her just to make that the bet. You can get roughly around minus one fifty for that. Um, I got to watch a little bit more on Dominic Reyes. We do know he has a really good head kick. We know he has decent range. But John Jones is just another level. That, that That's the whole thing. Just I mean, another level. He should win. Yeah. It's just John Jones should win every fight. But this is just one where I wouldn't be too shocked if he lost. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be like, oh my God. I'd I would just, be. I'd be like. I think I would be. I don't think so, man. Because when. What else have we seen from Dominic Reyes other than like knocking guys out? That's fair enough. But when you're a young up-and-comer and that athletic, 
it's it's not surprising when a guy like that comes in and actually does something that you weren't expecting because you just don't know how good that guy is. It's not like it's like uh, some guy who's over the hill coming off losses and you kind of mm-hmm. know what to expect with him. He's not going to get that much better. No, no, this is a young guy who's constantly getting better. So we don't know what type of form he's going to come into this fight. So that's why I wouldn't be like, oh my, I'd be like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. Well, what the, like. I felt, uh, I think I told you about it after they had the press conference between Jones and Reyes. I felt like I, I I sensed something different in John Jones where he actually wanted to go out there and like kill this guy. He doesn't have animosity towards him, like a DC type of thing, but he just had something in the way that he was talking where he was like, I am going to finish you, Reyes. I'm going to do this. Like he's in that mode where he's just going to go out there and shut people down the and just best be John like, Jones is the one who thinks he's got to send everyone a reminder yeah, as to who the I fuck I think this is. might be the one this is that reminder fight I, th- I think so that's kind of the feeling that I got he should from that come hunt conference. to the Jay-Z song reminder, <laughs> reminder. <laughs> whenever, he's re- whenever he's ready to like, go into beast mode he should just be like alright I need like the second Gus fight how did he not come out to reminder yeah that's true could you imagine being the opponent waiting in the cage for him and then hearing that song? Yeah, like, oh, fuck. I'm gonna have to give you a reminder. <laughs> um, I love drones in this spot. Um, I want to look into the tape a little bit more. I got to record the podcast on Monday, so I got to dust up on that first. But I, I really think John Jones is going to dust Reyes here. Um, Andrew Lee again was going to be my locker than I played, but I can't justify betting her straight at minus three three twenty six, minus three thirty five. Uh, but just getting back to John Jones. Goes in there, finishes Dominic Reyes. I was hoping that we were going to get the Alexander Rakic fight, or Rakic would still be up there. Too early. But Rakic already has that like L now to fucking Vulcan Uzdemir. So well, that he did just lose right? that fight. That bullshit lost. Exactly. That fight, man. Exactly. So that sets Rakic back slightly. He's still at number ten, which is crazy. Other light heavyweight fights that have been booked. Glover to share against Anthony Anthony Smith. Not bad. Good rebound fight for Smith. We have Corey Anderson versus Jan Blahovic coming up as well. I, think, I believe that's the f- yeah that's the card after two forty seven. So it's good that they're going to be able to get that settled with. So I think that we'll get our next f- contender off of that fight. Well, yeah. Here's the thing, because the only other fight Jones would entertain is going up to fight Stipe at heavyweight. But the whole Stipe DC thing is going to take a while up. now. I don't think um, we see uh, Jones there until at least twenty twenty one. Now, if Jones like. Goes in there and doesn't take damage against Dominic Reyes. He's not going to wait for Steve Bain DC to play out. Because what? That fight might happen in... I think they wanted to happen closer in July. Mm-hmm. And then what? Steve is going to sit out another six months. He's not going to be ready till like January of next year. So I think Jones fights at least twice this year. If he gets through Reyes, yeah, he should get uh, probably Corey Anderson, who will probably beat Blackovitz. Or the winner of that, either way. Mm-hmm. I think uh, they should throw Rakic in there somewhere against... Uh Maybe Reyes, you know what I mean? Like if Reyes comes out on the loss here, they do the Rakic fight just to get Rakic hopefully back on track. No, because that's just, I, I feel like he would have to wait too long. I think Rakic should return a little but quicker who, than that. who else there, right? Yeah. Oh, yo. Johnny Walker. I forgot, dude. Um, The Ryzen champ is in the UFC now. Yuri. <laughs> oh, actually, that's who, that's who a very good throwing? point. He's he, he might get a good name too. Yuri, Let's go check Yuri this guy out. Pro Chak, yeah, Pro Chazaka, <laughs> don't even, don't, whatever the don't fuck even his try. name is. Tony, don't try. Twenty six, three and one. Pro Chazaka. Okay, I was close. Pro <laughs> Pro Chazka. Pro Pro Chazka. Well, I don't know what that accent over the A means. So I don't know how to pronounce that shit. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Is his last name? Sorry, his last one is CB Dalloway. Yeah. Oh God, CB. CB went up to light heavyweight for that and got knocked out in a minute, fifteen seconds. Please check. Do Do you remember when uh um. On Wikipedia, someone had put, uh, oh no, who was that? That was Tim Means. They had actually put out a, a loss on his record by knockout due to the hot tub, the sauna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, I remember And then that. Tommy Dole at the fucking sauna on the, <laughs> the episode. <laughs> Dude, he lost to Boyan Velichkovich back in 2012. It was a welterweight. The oh, fuck? Oh, God. It was a welterweight. Okay. Abdul Kareem Adelaide yeah, is a beast young. as well. These guys, I don't Some mind too guys. much when they're young and they lose because they just fight all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not picking and choosing fights. They're just fucking fighting. He lost to Mohamed Lawal and then back in 2015, the but then back. got that win back. But that was also really diminished. Yeah. So, Lawal. how many fights? One, two, Lawal three, put him four, out. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten fight winning streak. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind Jury against uh, Rakic. Why I not? No, I. I because that's two contenders you're killing off. I, I like them being matched up with other people. They did that with Rakic and uh, I guess Suzmir wasn't really a no, contender. He's at the time. Like I a, guess you're right. Yeah. Um, I think Yuri gets like 
a guy in the top five or six that's coming off a deal, just so he can f- just come right in because he's the rising champ, right? Get him a good solid win. Generally, those guys get a high level fight in the mm-hmm. first one. Ah, uh, Tiago Santos is still lingering out there. He should be ready to come back soon. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out a way that we can like inject Rakic back into the discussion because I thought he was the one guy that would have a decent enough chance against Jones. He did show some chinks in that old Uzumir fight. It shouldn't have been that close if I truly believe that he had the the, the, the But that should have been one of be- those fights where you learn a lesson, you improve, you get better, and you at least you get out of there with a win. But right. now it's like he got yeah. out of there with a loss, and it's not even justified. Yeah. Like- uh, anything else we want to wrap up about 247? Like, again, it's kind of a weak card. It's a top-heavy card, that's right? for sure. It's mostly just about the main card outside of... It's really four fights, four good fights on this card. We were actually supposed to get Jimmy Rivera versus Marlon Vera on it, too. Oh. So that would have been a nice nice fight on there. Diego Lima was supposed to fight Alex Morona. That should have been a good fight. What Sean O'Malley was supposed to fight uh, Canones. That got Shit, moved. what the fuck? Oh, this card. Ovin, same pro against Ryan Spann. But then the same pro just got booked for USADA. Oh, he did? Yeah. I don't know what the details were around behind that, but I let's pull that up. Yeah, who cares about OSP? But that's what they're doing now, though. Um, like him, yeah, exactly. Our validity cleared to compete. Oh, the three month suspension for us. Oh, Diego Sanchez, just same to, thing. To, to, so yeah, these fighters thing. are doing like Sean O'Malley went the other way. As soon as he got the notification from Usada, he came out and told everybody. But Usada is doing that thing now where they don't say anything until at least three three months or something after the test, so that the fighter has a chance to defend themselves, so they don't get besmirched immediately. Right. Interesting. That's what they're doing. And then OSP took that route where he's accepted the three months. Yo, suspension. Osterine again. I think that's the same thing Diego Sanchez had. Mm-hmm. It seems like a contaminated issue, but at the same time, God knows. So when is this retroactive to though? It says he's already cleared, but same pro received a three month suspension backdated to October yeah, 25th, clear, which January means he's 20th. already eligible yeah. to compete again. He's briefly linked to fight Ryan Span, but the belt was subsequently scrapped. I wonder why they scrapped it then. He could have probably just stayed on it, just like Diego Sanchez. He's fighting the week after yeah, the this fight, and he's cleared. So we can't really blame the UFC for all these fights falling out. Like, it would have been a de- more a better card had all these fights stuck together, Fair right? Fair enough. Let's oh, give that it, to them. Yeah, it's still weak, though, regardless, whether yeah. it's their fault or not. <laughs> yeah, like Rivera Marlin, Lima Morono yeah. would have been a good fight. I was really looking to bet fucking Lima there. Remember how much I used to hate Lima? And now I, I love Lima. I fucking hated I, him. Because I watched him on Ultimate Fighter, so I loved him. I just love fading him. Like I just ah. Jesse Taylor was a great one for me to get get that bet. Yeah. Um I just always felt bad for Lima getting held down by these guys. I'm like, oh this guy's really good on the I feed, know. but he's gotta uh, fix this hole. The Luke Jamal fight was a great fight for him, which is the last win that he had. I had money on him there. And I was probably gonna bet him here against Alex Morono. I thought he would have been able to box his face. I think, off. I, I think so too, hundred percent. Right. Hundred percent. Um, I might actually, now that these other fights are booked now, I might have to look into them and see if I find any edges there. This Austin Lingo guy opened as a minus 500 favorite. Well, not on five times, but he did open as a minus 500 favorite. And uh, and he he came down to minus 240-ish now. But Kalen, Kalen Williams is a guy that I want to look at too. Morono is a weird fighter. Like he's, he's not the best technically at everything, but he's like grindy and scrappy enough to get some of these victories. Yeah. So I think those Caleb Williams guys could actually pose some in, uh, some intriguing uh, adversity for him. Nothing else. Is no, there? not yet, man. Nothing else. Maybe we hopefully we have more coming out of uh, next week. Maybe Desmond fucking Green. Reyes does does the unthinkable. Fucking Desmond Green, back to Joe. Yeah, that w- I remember reading that story when it first came out. Then he was in the UFC fighting after that and no one was talking about him like was it didn't this guy just fucking potentially kill people in a car accident and no one was talking about oh, it not then potentially it, he did <laughs> then it came back out that was a and then he got thrown in jail, and now everyone's like oh fuck this guy is a piece of I'm like why why was no one talking about this when it initially came out like why the fuck was he even allowed to fight yeah. after that I don't get what's happening here I remember hearing the story when it first came out he was I thought it was weird fight, it just swept under the rug he was just set to fight uh, in ACA and obviously, I guess they got they got to pull him now because he just Fuck he got jailed dude. again. Dude, he got jailed. Apparently, he got three citations for driving without a license after this case happened, and he wasn't supposed to be having a license. Like, I'm like, how does it get to three? 
Yeah. That's yeah, what I don't yeah, understand yeah. about the fucking system. The first one should have been And enough. three in like two weeks? What the fuck are we doing? And you, he's just allowed to keep driving? You just get citations all day? Clearly this guy doesn't give a fuck. Throw his ass in jail. Poor guy. Not poor guy. Yeah, it's actually his guy. fucking... Fuck this dude. There was a... Uh, he fought in... Actually, you might have been at that card. And I was a fan of him when I was watching him in Bellator and stuff coming up. I thought, oh, this guy's promising. But yeah, fuck this dude. I don't know if you remember this, but... He got caught in this weird ass submission at Score Fighting Series. I think you were at this event, but it was like it was like a weird omoplata arm bar. Like that's the submission that he got on it. Doesn't it already look like a weird fucking yeah, position? I don't understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> right? Like look at look at Desmond Green's right arm. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, right? that is interesting. It's like a weird omoplata arm bar type of thing. I remember seeing. That, I'm like, damn that that should be that's got to be submission of the year. That's there, like, who, who's ever seen a submission like yeah, that before? Seriously, no kidding. Um, all right, that's that's fucking it. Like, I don't, I don't got nothing else to say. Um, yeah, we'll nothing. see you guys after two forty seven. Hopefully, we have something interesting to talk about. And Hopefully not just a split uh, decision. <laughs> Dominic Reyes by split decision. Let's do it. Ah, at least give it to Jones. If Controversial it's be a split decision. Split decision. Fuck. Dominic Reyes. Fuck. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we get to do that next week. Don't really got much else to say. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you guys subscribe, hit the like, Light drop week. a comment below. Yeah. Um, follow him at Tunes, follow me at MMALOTN. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace.